Matthew chapter number 2. As we continue this thought of pursuing the king. And taking these wise men as an illustration. Verse number 1 where it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, In the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And we've spent some time talking about the Lord Jesus Christ as the king of kings and as the Lord of lords. It was prophesied at his birth in Luke chapter number 1 that He would be great and be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God would give unto him, Jesus, the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. And that's exactly what these wise men came looking for. We talked about the role and the position that these men had to uh, crown the next king of the Parthian Empire, who held the title as King of Kings, They saw Jesus as something more than that. They were looking for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the promised Messiah that Daniel had prophesied about. They watched for his timeline in Daniel chapter number 9. And when they saw the sign of his coming, they traveled here to Jerusalem. Didn't follow the star to Jerusalem. Scripture doesn't tell us that. We kind of add that in. They knew a king was born, and so they went where a king ought to be. Jerusalem, to the kingdom. And they ask this question that we've read to Herod, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Not just a man who is given the title to try to appease the people, but where's the one that was born king of the Jews? The prince that shall come, as Daniel talked about. They were looking for him. And of course then, when they got done talking to King Herod, they went outside and there was the star that they saw so long ago. And it tells us when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And there from Jerusalem, the star led them to where the Lord Jesus Christ was and they found him. And we've been kind of taking the verse out of Luke chapter number 10 where Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And with all thy mind, and using that to understand how you and I are to pursue our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. We spent some time talking about the fact that we need to pursue Him with all of our heart. That He is to be the absolute love of our life. That we are to love Him so much more than we love anyone or anything else. Jesus said it ought to look like you hate everyone else because you love me so much more than you love anyone else. And what a challenge that is for us to search our hearts and really see, are we pursuing Jesus with all of our heart? Is he the true love of our life or have we elevated a person into that place that belongs to only him? Have we elevated maybe a career or some goal or some passion in a place that belongs only to the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to pursue Him with all of our heart. And then we spent some time talking last week about pursuing Him with all of our mind. And that uh, as you love somebody, you should want to know more about them. You should be interested in who they are and what's going on in their life. What are the things that they care about? What are the things that they don't like? I mean, when we love somebody, we want to know more about them. If we really love the Lord Jesus Christ... We're not content with the information that we have about Him. We want to know more. And I want a deeper relationship with Him. And I want to know more about Him today than I did yesterday. And so I spend time in His Word, reading it, not just, not just for a devotional. Okay, we ought to do that. I'm thankful for the daily bread and other things that we can use as to have a little personal devotional time. But we ought to have a personal Bible study time. Okay, we're we're digging deeper into the Word of God for ourselves. We're studying it. I want to learn more about who He is. And of course, it's never just to gain information for information's sake. It's so that I can have information about my Lord, my Savior, and I can do something with it. 
Okay, I think about my own relationship with my wife. It's one thing to know and to understand what she likes and what she wants and what she expects, okay? I ought to take that information and apply it to the way that I live my life. So if I know, hey, my wife likes this certain thing, that's what I'm going to get her for Christmas. Okay, I'm not going to buy her, uh, you know, a vacuum cleaner. No. I have bought my wife a vacuum cleaner because she loves vacuuming. So I know my wife. I understand. And so... But for a lot of ladies, you know what, that's not necessarily their thing. Okay, you have to know your wife. You have to know your spouse and use the information that you have about them uh, to build and work on that relationship. I do not buy my wife tickets to Hawkeye games for birthdays and uh, Christmas. Why? Because she doesn't care anything about it. Okay, she'll go with me because she likes to spend time with me. But I don't buy those things for her. I might buy those things for myself. But, see, we got to use the information that we have, that we gain. And the same is true about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we all know a lot of things about who he is. Okay, we all know a lot of things about what he wants and what he expects. It's another thing to take that information that we know and apply it to the way that we live our lives. And we use the illustration of that bad servant. Remember, he buried the talent, didn't do anything with it, and when the Lord and the Master came back, he said, hey, here's the one talent you gave me. I knew. I knew you were strict. I knew you expected a lot. I knew you reaped where you didn't sow, and all these other things. And remember what the Master said? He said, you're a wicked servant, because you knew And you didn't take that information and apply it to the way that you live your lives. He said, you knew certain things about me, and so you should have done something with the talent so I could have gained my own with usury. Take the information and do something. So we ought to love God. We ought to love our Savior with all of our mind and have a desire to know Him deeper and better and more completely. Here this morning, we want to spend some time talking about the fact that we need to pursue the King with all of our strength. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can spend looking into your Word, Lord, and trying to gain an insight of how we are to pursue you. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to put all of our strength into this relationship that we have with you. Lord, it not be some sort of half-heart effort It wouldn't just be a relationship of convenience, but Lord, we would put everything that we have into developing a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so Jesus himself said, we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all of our strength. And I looked up what this word meant in the Greek, and it's the idea of ability, force, strength, or might. In other words, we are to love Him with everything that we have. We're to put all of our effort into developing this relationship. You know, one of the problems that marriages have today is an unwillingness to give everything to the relationship. An unwillingness to give everything into this person and making a marriage work. It's so interesting to me to see uh, so many spouses holding back from one another, holding back finances from one another. And man, I have heard and dealt with some crazy financial things that couples have with one another, you know, holding back the paycheck and only giving a certain amount and whatever. It's just like, what, what are you thinking? Why do you think that this is going to work when you're holding back from your spouse, you're holding back from your family and from this relationship. There's those that hold back physically and uh, won't give physical affection in a proper context, in a proper way. I mean, uh, as human beings, we crave that physical affection of hugs and kisses and holding hands and all those things. That's a part of it. And how sad it is we won't completely give ourselves to a spouse. There's those that hold back emotionally. Okay, and we've talked about the importance of literally saying the words, I love you, literally saying 
all the things that we appreciate about someone. And man, those words ought to just naturally flow off our lips and we ought to naturally just share our heart and our feelings, our emotions with the people that we care about spiritually, holding back from one another. Man, how, what a shame that is. I mean, the Lord has given us each other to be a spiritual uh, encouragement and uplifting to each other. That's the whole point of church in the first place, is that we can build up and edify the body of Christ to provoke unto love and to good works. And many times we just kind of shield everybody off from us. We wonder why relationships don't work when we won't really put everything into it. If you only put into a relationship what you're getting out of it, eventually that relationship is going to fall apart. It will. It takes each of us giving everything that we have all the time. We're never told to only put into a relationship what we get out of it. In fact, we're told to put more into every relationship than we get out of it. Too many times we spend the time keeping score with other people. Okay, we keep score with our spouse, and how many times do they say, I love you, that's how many times I'm going to say it. How many times do they give physical affection, that's how many times I'm going to give. And so we just kind of keep score with one another. I think it's so comical when people get upset because somebody didn't say hello to them. Well, they didn't say hi to me, I ain't, I'm not going to say hi to them. What kind of foolishness is that? How old are you? He doesn't say put into it what you get out of it. He tells us to put more into it than we get out of it. Notice Jesus' words in Matthew chapter number 5. Verse 38 says, Ye have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Okay, in other words, give back exactly what you're getting. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Notice what he says in verse number 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying give more into it than you get out of it. Even if somebody hates you, they mistreat you, they persecute you, we are to give love in return. We are to give kindness in return. Turn to Romans chapter number 12. We touched on this very briefly in my life group this morning. I want you to see this in Romans 12, verse number 17. The Bible says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. Dear beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So notice what he says. If your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. If we ought to do that for our enemies, how much more should we do that for our spouse? How much more should we do that for our children? How much more should we do that for our brothers and sisters in Christ? Okay, put more into the relationship than you're getting out of it. Give everything that you have. Don't hold back just because they're not doing what you want them to do. Just because somebody's not behaving like you want them to behave. Maybe they don't say the words that you want them to say. That's not a reason to hold back ever. He says we're to put everything into it. And I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't just put into our relationship what we put into it. He didn't do that. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, in every relationship there's a pursuer. Somebody that started pursuing somebody else. It's very rare for a story to to start out this way. We just locked eyes and we just knew. That does happen. Okay, but that's rare. Usually somebody noticed somebody first and somebody started pursuing that other person until they finally gave up. (laughs) That's how my relationship went anyways. So fellas, if you're single in here, you just keep on pursuing. 
unless there's a restraining order and then, you know, <laughs> stop that pursuit. I was very close to being on an episode of Criminal Minds, but <laughs> she finally gave up in that. Um, and so when people, you know, in my relationship with Lysander, I was the pursuer. And that's pretty obvious to tell. All you got to do is look at both of us and you can see I'm a pursuer. There's, it's funny because when people see us together, they wonder what in the world is she doing with him? <laughs> Their next thought is he must have a lot of money. <laughs> and they're wrong. Uh, and I often wonder what is Lysander doing with me? I, I think about that. But I'm the one that pursued her. But what if I only pursued her the way that she pursued me? Okay, what if that was true? Okay, I, we wouldn't be married, that's for sure. Wouldn't have the beautiful children that God has blessed us with. Okay, I pursued her, and then until finally I wore her down, okay, now we pursue one another. Okay, my, wife's, my wife gives her life to pursue after me as her husband. I'm thankful for a wife who pursues me. And she, a lot of the things she does, she does for me. She tries to look nice for me. She tries to be helpful to me. She's very loving in the things that she does and what she says. She pursues after me, and I pursue after her. That's the way that it ought to be. And uh, now consider the way that Jesus pursues us. Okay, We were his enemies. He loved us anyway. We were against him. But he pursued us anyway. He gave us everything that he had. Loved us with all of his strength. In John 15, 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. Then he said those wonderful words, You are my friends. You think about the way that he pursued us. He put everything into building a relationship with us. He was willing to give everything. He humbled himself to take on human flesh and we will never know or understand the sacrifice that that was. You know, what a wonderful time where we stop and just remember Jesus as God taking on human flesh. But we'll never understand the sacrifice that that was. He was willing to endure a lifetime of mockery and suffering. Psalm 69 gives us an insight into what it was like for the Lord Jesus Christ as a child growing up the way that he did, in the culture that he did. Everybody knowing Joseph wasn't his father, and the mockery that that caused him, the hatred from his own brothers and siblings. Yet he was willing to do all of that to pursue you and to pursue me. Think about him being beaten and crucified. There in the Gospels, it's recorded the suffering that he was willing to endure physically, emotionally, spiritually to build this relationship with us. What an incredible thought. Isaiah 53, 3-7 sums it up very well where the scripture says he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And you can just read those words and understand that he loves us with all of his strength, with everything that is within him. He didn't hold back anything for us. Okay, it was our sin. It was our transgressions. It was our failures. And yet he was willing to...
to pay the price so that we could have forgiveness, so that we could have this relationship. He puts everything into it, and He always has and He always will. He never does anything for us half-hearted. It's with all of His passion, with all of His strength, what a sobering question as we think about the fact that He loves us with all of His strength. Do we love Him with all of our strength? I mean, do we really put everything into building and developing a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Maybe you're better than me, but I have to say, you know what? No, I don't. I don't always put everything into it. There's a lot of days that it's a half-hearted effort at best on my part. That I don't pursue him the way that he pursues me. What a challenging thought to know that he pursues me with all of his strength even when I don't give him even a portion of the strength that is within me. And many times it's a relationship of mere convenience. Luke 14, 27 describes what it means to love Him with all of our strength. The Bible says, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You see, we have to be willing to endure anything for Him. That's what it means to love Him with all of our strength. Taking up our cross, and notice what it says. Jesus said we're to take up our own cross and follow Him. Okay, so we have to be willing... To suffer, We have to be willing to die and to give our lives in pursuit of Him to develop this relationship with Him. He says, if you really want to have that close relationship, you really want to call yourself a Christian, a disciple of mine, somebody who is close to me, you have to be willing to die to everything else. Okay, that means putting everything else into this relationship forsaking all others and forsaking everything else to develop a relationship with Him. I'm too busy. I'm too, too often we're consumed with ourselves in love of ourselves instead of being consumed with the Lord Jesus Christ and a love for Him. We allow a lot of things and a lot of people to come before the one who gave his life as a ransom for us. What are you willing to endure for Jesus? When we're putting all of our strength into it, we're willing to endure any persecution, any heartache, any inconvenience to show him how much we love him. Loving Jesus with all of our strength means doing what He wants us to do, no matter the cost. Remember what He said in John 14, 15, If you love Me, keep My commandments, He said. He said, if you really love Me, you're going to do what I want you to do. We can't do what I want to do all week long, come to church, sing a few songs, and try to pretend like we love Jesus with everything that's within us. It doesn't work that way. Just like I can't live my life for myself all week long, one day a week for an hour a week, tell my wife how much I love her and expect to have a meaningful relationship with her. It doesn't work that way. Why? Because the way I've lived my life all week long has shown her what's important to me. And if it hasn't been all week long showing her that she's the one that's important to me, what I say in a few moments or what I do in a few moments won't make up for the rest of the time that I fail. We want to pretend like we love Jesus and we've given him everything that's within us just because we've gone to church. We can't do that. We need to put everything that we have into the relationship. We make far too many excuses as to why we cannot obey Him. Far too many excuses for why we can't go to church, for why we 
can't give, for why we can't tell others about him. Many of us don't need somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, to tell us what Jesus wants us to do. For many of us, we already know what he wants us to do. It's just a matter of doing it. Just like we talked about last week, it's a matter of taking the information and giving it all of our effort, doing something with it, putting all of our strength into it. Jesus didn't make excuses. He did. He performed. He acted. He showed. He loved us and He did it with all of His strength. Shouldn't we pursue Him in the same way? Now think about these wise men as they made this trip hundreds of miles. So they're watching, they're waiting, they see the star appear. And I think it was a supernatural event and a sign that the Messiah was born. I don't think you can pinpoint to some celestial things. And No, I think it was a supernatural event. They were watching it happen. See, now they have a choice to make. I mean, they could have just stayed where they were. I mean, that's hundreds of miles. Elon Musk hasn't built a bullet train yet for us to get there in a couple minutes. Okay, hundreds of miles, it's going to take a long time to get there. They could have made all kinds of excuses. They saddled up on their camels, their horses, and whatever else. Went to great expense and great effort to go find where Jesus was. They wanted to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So they put the effort into it. They wanted to know Him personally. It wasn't just, hey, He is born, the Messiah is born, and we're going to celebrate. No, it's the Messiah is born, and I want to see Him, and I want to meet Him, and I want to know Him personally. And so they put the effort into going to find Him. They put the effort into going to get to know Him. What kind of effort are we putting into it? We don't have to travel hundreds of miles, make some sort of pilgrimage. Okay, we, anywhere we are, everywhere we are, we have an opportunity to develop a relationship with Him. If you're here this morning without Jesus Christ as your Savior, He's not far from any one of us. Okay, He's right here. He wants a relationship with you. He gave everything to develop a relationship with you. And the great thing is, he didn't say you had to join this church or any other church. He didn't say you have to give all this kind of money. He didn't say you have to be baptized and do all these things. He said you have to trust and put your faith in the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. You can have your sins forgiven. You can have a relationship with God. I encourage you to do that today. And Christians, he's not far from you either. Sometimes we're far from him, but he's never far from us. See, if you want that relationship, it is available. Just as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, he said, you'll seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. If you really want a relationship with Jesus and you want to be close, you don't have to make some pilgrimage and travel hundreds of miles. All you got to do is spend the time with Him. Put everything that you have into developing a relationship with Him. A half-hearted effort doesn't work in human relationships. It doesn't work in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ either. And no amount of excuses matter when it comes to Him. Because He knows all things. He knows the motives of our heart. He knows what's going on in each and every one of our lives at all times. We have no excuses for why we can't seek Him, for why we can't develop a relationship, for why we can't put everything that we have into pursuing Him. Because He's given us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. He pursues us with all His strength. We need to pursue Him 
with all of ours.